Will Roberts, and this is House Hunters, LPTA edition. Now in this episode, we have a happy newlywed couple, Mr. and Miss Bacon. They're looking for that perfect home to start their new life. Come on, let's meet the new couple. Okay, hello, Mr. and Miss Bacon. Hey, yeah. Davis. Great to meet you, yes. And Tina. Yeah. Can I call yeah. you Davis and Tina? I'm Tina, and I've been a contracting officer for 20 years now. And I'm Davis, and I've been a contracting officer for 20 years. Okay, well, first of all, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Now you know how this goes. I'm going to find three houses that are as close as possible to your criteria, and then you have to make that tough decision. Now remember, you can only pick one. So let's start with you guys giving me some direction on the home that you're looking for. We just need something we can live in. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. What else? That's it. Um, okay. Oh, and we will pick the cheapest one out of the three. Okay, well, this is gonna be easier than I thought. With their criteria, it's gonna be no problem finding some houses that meet their needs. Oh, come on in, welcome, welcome. Hey Davis, Hi. Tina, hey. bet you guys are excited to see the new houses. I didn't even sleep last night. All right, yeah. good, we'll have a seat. Thank we'll you. go over some of our options here. Well, I know you're excited, so let's just cut to the chase and start with house number one. A few cons here. There is no internal plumbing. There's a hole in the ceiling of the living room. I, I call it a first floor skylight. Um, oh, and it is in a terrifying neighborhood. I mean, it's, it's a real nightmare. Uh, you're gonna wanna stay indoors after 6 p.m. But the good news is it does meet your technical criteria. Okay, well, let's try the second house. We've got another, another one here. House number two. There's some cons here as well. There's no fridge. But there is a gently used Yeti cooler. Um, I'm sorry, it's a knockoff Yeti cooler. And uh, there's bay windows. Nope, nope, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. There are no windows. So you gotta be really breezy in the summers. And there is a homeless man who, who generally lays there in the morning. Uh, the good news is he, he's out for the rest of the afternoon most days. Oh, I know that place. I walked by there the other day. He actually tried to grab me. Oh yeah, he's an ankle grabber for sure. You're just gonna wanna you know, jump, get a clearing on your way home. There's one final house though. We've got your final house. So here we, we have a box. Couple cons, not nothing big. You can't have a fireplace. Uh, there's limited space for dinner parties. And you know, it's, it's a little boxy because you know, it's a, it's a box. But the good news is it meets your criteria perfectly. You can't live in a box. A lot of people live in boxes. That's not what we asked for. Well, actually, let's see. Criteria. You said something we can live in. Nothing else. I knew I should have given the descriptions. Can we talk about this later, please? But the good news is this one is your lowest price. So I guess that's the one we have to pick. Welcome to your happy home. So before we check on our couple and see how they're enjoying their new home, Let's first talk a little bit about what an LPTA is, its challenges, pitfalls, and when to use it. So LPTA, lowest price, technically acceptable. We're gonna to go to the FAR, and we're gonna to go to 15.101-2, which talks about a lowest price, technically acceptable, or LTPA, as part of a best value type competition. So paragraph A says, the lowest price, technically acceptable source selection process is appropriate when the best value is expected to result from the selection of the technically acceptable proposal with the lowest price. So basically, you figure out what technical acceptability is, and then whoever is technically acceptable, whether it's five proposals, six proposals, seven, 
you look at that pool, whoever's got the lowest price automatically is the winner. Now, I carry around a 2011 edition of the FAR, and that's all it says in my edition, right? It just says what an LPTA is and, and when to use it. Now, since then, they've modified the LPTA procedures because of the way it's been used. So, out with the baby FAR, in with the electronic FAR. Let's look at what the new FAR guidelines say about LPTA. 15.101-2 uh, now says that you should not use an LPTA unless you can satisfy these requirements. I'm not gonna list them all, but here are some. Unless the agency can comprehensively and clearly describe what technical acceptability even is. Unless the agency would realize no real value if a proposal exceeded that minimum technical acceptability. Here's another one. Unless the agency believes that that will require no kind of subjective judgment from the source selection panel on some on a proposal that is maybe better in terms of technical. So bottom line is you need to be very careful about using LPTA. It's still a tool that you can use, but it shouldn't be a tool that you use if there's any sort of variation on technical acceptability. An example of maybe a good LPTA is when you have a product uh, that is very easily defined, where you know that whatever passes that acceptability no matter what proposal it is, whatever passes is going to be good to go. Anything short of that, you need to do a trade-off or something else. So we talked about products, let's talk about services. Requirements that involve services is a little harder for LPTA because it's not as tangible, it's not as well-defined. You're not talking about a thing, you're talking about how people perform. And some people can perform in more creative ways, in more innovative ways. Bottom line. If you're doing a contract for services, you need to ask yourself, can I really define, am I in a position to define what the minimum technical standards are? And if I am, am I okay with any and every company that would meet those technical standards? Now, before we talk about the, the disadvantages and challenges to LPTA, let's check in on our couple and see how they're enjoying their home. Hey, watch it. We live here. It's been a little bit of an adjustment, but we're getting used to it. Renovations are really easy. It makes Davis feel like a real handyman. I'm getting pretty good at remodeling. We're getting ready to do an extension. Are you sure you can tear down the wall? Yeah, I can handle this. Okay. Well, I'm glad that they're settling in okay. But have you been in a similar situation in the government where you have to live with the decisions that you make? Let's talk about three main challenges to using an LPTA. Challenge number one, you decrease competition already by turning away valuable players. Now, some companies, many companies, won't even compete if they know that you're using LPTA procedures. These are companies that would have otherwise submit really good technical proposals for your mission. You may be missing out. If you're submitting an LPTA, just know that you're already thinning out the competition and you may not be getting the best players. Number two, you're gonna lower the quality of your solution and therefore the quality of the performance. Now, if you're not confident that you are adequately describing what it is that's technically acceptable or your requirement owner is not adequately describing what's technically acceptable, then rest assured, you will most likely end up with a poor quality service. Final and third point, you ultimately end up spending more money anyway due to poor performance and unnecessary modifications. Now this is a consequence of the first two. If you end up describing your requirement poorly and getting a poor performer that's at the lowest price, you get what you pay for and you end up, because of sunk costs, just putting more money in the contract because you don't wanna start over, but you're pumping more money in just to get the thing performed properly. Hello? Hey. Yeah, I'm reconsidering my approach. I'm starting over. I'll let you know when I'm ready. <laughs>